Good evening again. And uh, yeah, the holiness of God. Thank you, Lucas, for reminding us on that. And I'd just like to uh, leave with you um, today a slogan. It's, it's a short time, so I thought I'll keep it short. So you know how slogans work, right? They, they're short. A lot of companies uh, invest a lot of money to get the perfect slogan for their product so that anybody who uh, hears that statement, the first thing that comes to their mind is that product, which that slogan is connected to, right? The slogan that I would like to uh, leave with you today is just believe. I know it sounds like a sneaker company slogan, just believe. No, I'm not here to talk about sneakers, but this is a slogan that was uh, given by none other than Jesus Christ. And I want to bring your attention to uh, Mark chapter 5. And I'm looking from verse 20. It's a very familiar portion of uh, scripture. It's the incident where this synagogue leader, Jairus, right? He comes to Jesus and and falls down at his feet, right? A little, if you look at a little background, that's not something that a synagogue leader does, right? If you look at the history and what used to go on, synagogue leaders or religious leaders and Jesus, they never had a good relationship, right? They were always out there to point fingers at Jesus. They were condemning him. Um, if you go back two chapters to Mark chapter three, uh, you have a bunch of uh, religious leaders there. Um, verse 22, uh, the experts in the law, these are experts, they came to him and were telling him he is possessed by Beelzebul. They're talking about Jesus, and that is how he is casting out demons. Now remember, these are experts, and these are the, the, the highly... Uh, Consider people of those times, religious leaders, and they are telling this to Jesus. And don't you just love the way how Jesus responds to them? He keeps it very simple. How can Satan drive away Satan? How can a kingdom be divided within himself? How can a house be divided within itself? That house will fall, right? And they have no answer for him. Or you can also, if you look to Luke, um, Luke chapter uh, 3, there you see that uh, these religious leaders actually are filled with rage uh, with Jesus for all the things that he's doing. And uh, they're trying to force him out of the town. They bring him up to the top of a hill in the intent to throw him down from there. And then Jesus somehow manages to get away from them. So that's just a little background. You know, the, the, the synagogue leaders and Jesus, they, they always had problem with what Jesus was doing. But here is something different. In Mark chapter 5, you see Jairus, who is coming down and falling at his feet. Now, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not sure, I'm just contemplating here. Jairus was probably one of those uh, people among the... Uh, synagogue leaders who used to uh, condemn Jesus. I'm thinking that because he is coming to Jesus in, as a last resort, right? His, his daughter is probably on her last stages of whatever uh, disease she is going through. And uh, he is like left her. Probably he knows that he's not probably going to see her alive again goes to Jesus as probably this last resort. And uh, we see how Jesus responds, right? We were just hearing about the holiness of God from Lucas. He's not there questioning Jairus. Oh, so now you need my help. Uh, it was your group who used to uh, tell me that I'm possessed by the demons and, and I can't heal people on the Sabbath and all that. 
what were you doing till now? Why did you wait for this long for your daughter to get so ill? Why didn't you come to me before? None of those, none of those, right? What, what is the response that Jesus gives him when uh, Jairus is in front of him? Nothing. Verse 24, Jesus went with him. It's just amazing. Um, it's some of the characteristics like this that really um, blows my mind. It's in all his ministry that Jesus had on this, when he was on this earth, his ministry was pretty simple, right? Simple messages. He never complicated things. And he was always there, no matter what situation uh, you were in. No matter if I was one of the people who was pointing fingers at him, he was there. So Jesus went with him. And we know uh, what happens next. He's, he's on his way to Jairus' home. And uh, there he is confronted with this uh, woman who is suffering from a hemorrhage. And she, she touches his clothes. She is healed. And Jesus has to kind of deal with that and she speaks to him and when all of that is is going on is when we see uh people from Jairus's home is is come running to him saying uh why do you bother this teacher anymore your daughter is dead your daughter is dead and uh, they're talking to Jairus not Jesus but then Jesus responds to Jairus hearing this. And uh, what does he say? Verse 20. Uh, why do you trouble the teacher any longer? Verse 36. Jesus paying no attention to what was said, told the synagogue leader. Do not be afraid. Just believe. That's the slogan I want to uh, share with you this evening and to take back with you this evening. He's not um, trying to stop the people from discouraging him. In fact, he is just reassuring Jairus that there will be a lot of noise around and there will be a lot of people around who is trying to uh, discourage you or, or put in this fear in you. But don't be bothered of all of that. Do not be afraid. Just believe. Now, it's as easy as it sounds, right? You're just telling somebody, hey, just believe. I'll be okay. But I was trying to put myself into Jairus' situation, into his shoes, and trying to think from it. From his angle here is a man who is he's desperate he is on his very lowest uh, state he's probably tried a lot of options to heal this 12-year daughter of his and he's given up almost every hope and i can imagine as a father when, when your your daughter is dying and you're leaving her side leaving home to go look for this person who probably you were you know complaining about and i can imagine if the daughter is crying and 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 telling her dad dad where are you going right now I, i'm i'm not feeling well where are you going and i'm sure jairus when he's walking away from his daughter is probably crying his eyes out and going away so that he has this amount of faith that this person called Jesus can save my daughter, right? And that is the situation that he is in. And when there's these voices around him that is telling, why do you bother with this teacher? Your daughter is dead. In fact, I think what they're trying to tell him is, why do you even bother with this person? He's not done anything. We told you he's... He, he's not going to help you. We told you not to waste your time. See, now your daughter is dead. 
every time when um, we go through a, a situation, there are always voices around us, right? You turn on the news, you pick up the newspaper, social media these days, they, they all have voices and they all are out there to put in that fear. And when you try to um, go into uh, that place where only there is one savior and you're looking up to him and trying to uh, get to him, there are still those voices that are trying to discourage you. But then Jesus reminds us, do not be afraid. Just believe. We know how the story ends, right? Um, Jesus reaches Jairus' home um, and he tells that she is sleeping. And again, you see this group of people who, who's there in a house where this girl has just died. And what they're doing, they're mocking Jesus. They're mocking him. Oh, we know this guy. What, what, why did, and I'm sure they're, they're trying to tell Jairus, this is what we told you about him. Why bother with this teacher? Right? But we know that Jesus never lets go of somebody because in your past, you would have probably pointed fingers at him or, or accused him of something that he never did. He never looks into that, all of that and he heals or he actually raises uh, Jairus' daughter back to life. And as I look into my own life, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about myself, how many times I, have I not given that time and gone uh, to the voice that is around me than to the voice of the Savior, uh, listening to the voice around me rather than listening to the voice of the Savior who's trying to remind you that all you need to do is stay strong and not be afraid. But David knew this truth, right? Psalm 23, he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear what? No evil. I just wanna um, leave you with uh, one familiar portion of scripture from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He doesn't say, come to me, uh, those who are coming to me every other day other than the Sabbath, or who's coming to me with a big problem. He's not saying, come to me, uh, those who have new problems, don't come to me with the same problems. No, none of those things. He's come to me, all, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me. And I, I was thinking of this yoke, you know, I, my grandfather used to be a farmer and he used to explain to me how, how a yoke works, right? They, they put the yoke on the animal to actually guide the animal through, through the field when, you, when you're plowing the field, right? And sometimes this yoke is this big chunk of wood and it can be so heavy on the animal that it can actually bruise the animal's neck at times. But Jesus says, take my yoke on you because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and my load is not hard to carry. You know, fear is, is a real thing. We sometimes uh, think that fear is something superficial. No, at times it may be it, but, but most of the time it is real. 
And what do we fear about most of the time? Have you ever thought about it? Most of the time, at least for me, the things that I fear about are those things that has not really happened, right? Oh, what if I, what if I lose my job? Or what if I fall ill? What if I'm not able to uh, get to this place in time? What, what if, what if? It's all what if, right? Most of it, but it is real. And I want to leave you that slogan, which Jesus himself gave us, which is, do not be afraid, just believe. His name be glorified.